This is probably one of the biggest failures as a team, I would say, and it was a pretty painful one. We found this outsourced development company to work with. We got, you know, introduced to them from the accelerator that we had done, and I didn't know very much about tech. I was so focused on, like, the business plan and figuring out how we could actually get customers and do they want our product, things like that. And by not having a CTO, we didn't have someone really focusing on the actual product. So even when we won, I hardly knew, like, technical jargon. I knew what we wanted to build. I didn't really know what steps we had to take to get there. Um, so we we went with this development company and without really vetting their skills, knowing what they were capable of. And it was pretty much a very painful nine months. Um, it was in, not super expensive. Uh, I'm very grateful for that. I mean, it's still money that we yeah. absolutely wasted, but we started building with them. Um, problem after problem, like red flag after red flag, to the point where we got to about nine months in, the product was so horrible. Nobody wanted to use it. It did not like bring any justice to the vision that we had. Um, they couldn't quite figure out how to scrape the data from different, you know, thrift shops that we had already partnered with. It was, there was so much, um, so many issues. And that's, you know, about nine months in, it took me that long to realize like, this is not, this is not the like company work. to be working with. This is not the solution. This is not scalable. Exactly. Um, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that it took that long to realize that, but that's just the truth. Oh, we learned so much. I'd say the first thing that we learned was that um, you can't communicate what you want if you don't know how to communicate what you want. I, I personally, since we didn't have a CTO, did not know enough about the terminology and the processes of building something like this enough to be able to explain what I wanted. And on, on the contrary, they also weren't able to communicate in maybe more layman's terms what um, what they were building or what issues they were having. So there was totally, it's like we were speaking different languages and I I never wanted to feel like that again. So even even if, you know, when, when we did bring on a CTO, I, was, I, I said, I never want to feel like this again. I want to understand 100% what's going on with this product that we're building. Yeah. Um, so that's when I really started to take to like coding for dummies. I read that book like start to finish. I started doing boot camps and like really trying to like dive in on, okay, I might not be the one to build this product. Like I'm, I'm not our CTO and I, I know I, I, w- I won't have the capabilities to be able to do that, but I, I want to be able to understand everything to the best of my knowledge. So I really took to just trying to figure out more about tech. And that has been one of the best things to serve us moving forward, I would say. Um, In addition to that, I learned about if things aren't working out, they always say to fail fast, right? Fail hard. What's the point of like, keep trying? At what point do you realize you need to keep trying? And at what point do you realize it needs to stop and you need to try something new? I, I think that was a a big learning lesson for us in terms of how do we figure that out moving forward? Because it's always going to continue to happen. There's always going to be points where like, do we keep putting money into this? Do we try and spice some things up or do we just like halt that and pivot? Um, So that was kind of a big learning lesson for us as well. Another learning lesson for us was just figuring out how we always want to own our own source code. We don't want people to ever, you know, have control over it. We have control over everything that we own, everything that's being built. Um, the documentation is lined up, it's clean, it's concise. Um, so on the technical side, we also figured out a lot of things in terms of ownership and just making sure everything we build moving forward is in our, here's where we're at today. It's a combination of what are the things we're doing well? What are the things maybe that, you know, we're not doing so well? Where are we at? Let's take an audit. Where do we want to be? You know, you set the time spectrum for whatever, you know, goals you're trying to hit. So in a month, where do we want to be? Okay, what's the gap between where we're at, where we want to be? You know, it's very simple, but it's nice to look look at it all like that 